First of all, Eminem, let me say what an absolute. Yeah, I know, I know. What an absolute pleasure it is to meet me. Blah, blah, fucking blah. Can we skip the cliché cheese and get to the meat like a butcher? Notice the irony in me criticizing you for being cheesy whilst ending that mini rant with a ridiculously awful simile. Also notice the overuse of cheese and meat slash meat in that whole segment. Har, har, laugh, har, laughing is what I'm doing. I did notice, but thank you for making sure of that anyway. How oh so very courteous of you Mr. Shady. Please, just call me Marshall. Because I'm just Marshall Mathers. I'm just a regular guy. I don't know why all the fuss about me. Okay, Shady it is. Don't antagonize me you crumb slurping whore. I'll make you pay like a vending machine. Cha-ching biatch, don't play yourself. I'm Mr. Caucasian of rap. I'm a liaison of black culture. And I'm also a vulture that will swipe the mic. Like Tech 9 I'm just a renegade. Have you ever been afraid to say what's on your mind? No, never. So you'll say anything? Anything. 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 Okay, now we've established that you are a badass motherfucker who's just a regular guy and I like to slurp manjis until it settles in the depths of my stomach. We can get on with the fucking interview. Word. What's word? That thing I just said. Word. Okay, so. Eminem, regarding your latest album recovery, brackets, in stores now, close brackets, what were the challenges in making this album? Well, first of all, insert fake sigh, here. I'm a recovering addict, you know, so, that hurdle was certainly one I had to get over myself. By myself. I made the choice. Me, I did it. I was the one who did it. As you know, I was addicted to sleeping pills and... Okay, can I just stop you there? How many more fucking times are you going to bitch about your addiction? We're all fucked up, am. I've been a coke addict, a codeine addict, and nearly died from ecstasy and other fun-ass bitching narcotics. Can we just get to the music? Yeah, well, I just want it to be about the music now you know. You keep saying that, but then immediately start your pre-rehearsed speech about addiction every single fucking time. I realize you went through a hard time and it all went hand in hand to leading up to this album, not to mention some of its content, but for fuck's sake man, you've been clean for two years. You gave us the same shtick in 2009 for relapse. We fucking get it already. Okay slut, pipe down. Before I stick a, pipe down, your fucking throat. Until it's horse like, binky. Either that or I'll force my winky up your front bum and bounce that shit like a slinky. Do you dig, like the social site? Yes sir. I dig. I dig like a spade. I admire you for trying to match me metaphorically but unfortunately a spade doesn't automatically dig so it's somewhat of a failure on your part. Once again, you fucking dumb bitch. Now can we get back to me please? Of course. Well, now we have your fucking addiction story out of the way, how did you go about making the tracks on this album? I noticed there's a lot of different producers this time. Exactly. Okay so, when I started to make tracks for Relapse 2, the idea of a sequel started to make less and less sense to me. Simply due to the fact the music started to sound so different. Well, that's what I say in public. In reality it's because some bitch ass fans didn't like my new flows and subject matter so I gave in and switched it up. But anyway, in respect to making this music, I just feel like, well, you know, I was an addict so that played a huge. Oh boy, here we fucking go again. Yes you were an addict. God damn it Marshall, give it a fucking rest already. Okay, let's try a new angle. Was it fun making another track with Lil Wayne? No, love, it wasn't fun. Making no love was about as fun as having a burning hot rod covered in spikes and acid inserted into my jab sigh. And I know what that feels like, I actually tried that in my crazy days. Anyway, the reason I say that is because Lil Wayne sounds like a Martian being raped by auto-tune. Just listen to how annoying he sounds on the actual track. Then times that by a hundred and you'll be halfway to understanding how fucking annoying that shit sounds in the studio itself. When I first heard his verse, his voice almost made me vomit. Literally, vomit. 
due to such an overwhelming onset of feelings, of anger, disgust, hatred and annoyance. But I had to put them on air, Jimmy said either that or I give him another hand job. Wow. Well, I didn't realize you hated Wayne that much. I don't. I'm just saying this now to annoy all the Lil Wayne fans. For the sake of it. Got that? Bitch. Either that or I'm yanking your chain right now. And you don't have a chain, so what does that tell you? You're really starting to confuse me now. Confuse you? This shit's in my head, constantly. Imagine how I feel. You're so cocky, oddly intelligent and cool. How would you like to come to my place for some quote-unquote coffee? I don't drink coffee. No, no. Listen again, maybe I didn't make it clear enough. Like I said, quote-unquote. Coffee. Do you know what I'm getting at now? I think so, but there are a lot of dumb people in the world, so maybe I should just say it. No, don't. I'm going to. Stop. Sex. Oh, you've done it now. Okay, fuck it. Yes, I meant sex. How would you like to come back to my place, whip out your spaniel's ear, and give my meatloaf a bloody good seeing too? Sounds good to me, slut. Let me just finish by saying, Recovery is one badass motherfucking album, so go buy it. Oh yeah, and... You have to state the obvious, to state the obvious. Get it? Har, har, more laughing. Har.